Uh, hello, everybody. Jose Rodriguez here. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Yeah, one question that I get asked often is, well, should I agitate my cartridges? Well, it all depends. It all depends. And it often applies to a printer that sat around for years in somebody's warehouse and you picked it up for a dime. Okay, literally. And now you have it at home and you can't get this thing cleared. It will not print 100% nozzles. That's going to require a lot more work than what I am going to address right now. Here's the thing. Pigment inks will settle regardless. Dye inks cannot settle. So don't even think about agitating your dye ink cartridges. You're just agitating basically water, let's just say. There's nothing else except molecules of dye. And those will always be bound to water molecules and in suspension. But particles are different. Particles of pigment float. They're little tiny particles pebbles, rocks, and they are floating. Some inks have a microencapsulating process that actually covers or surrounds that little particle of pigment with a little globule of, in this case, a resin that is supposed to float and allow easy flow and lack of clogging and all of this. Very nice things. Also, the surface of the print microscopically, it'll be a lot more smoother and so you will have less gloss differential. So when do you have to agitate your cartridges? Well, when you first get them, before you install them. And you have two types of categories of printers. Printers with pigment cartridges that are right on top of the print head, and those are constantly under agitation. The Pro 10 cartridges, PGI-72, they have internal little paddles. They look like little oars for a rowboat, and they flick back and forth as you are printing. If you don't print for a while, the printer may run an agitation process and it'll just move the printer back and forth a little bit to agitate those inks because of that little internal paddle. Uh, printers like this, they have a system internally that uses a piston type system to pump ink in and out of that compartment internally. That is, the cartridges are not being agitated, okay? But even if you agitate the cartridges, you have ink lines that are leading to that internal compartment it's not going to really show up that you agitated that ink, but it's a good practice to do so, so that the ink you are feeding remains at the correct density as far as particles per milliliter. So, yeah, go ahead and agitate these every couple of months. Go ahead and agitate the P800 cartridges every couple of months. The same thing with any other stationary cartridge printer, P600, the same thing. Okay, Pro 1, the same thing. Okay, but the... Pro 10 will immediately react to agitation because it has no ink lines, no internal compartments. The ink from the cartridge that you just resuspended, immediately it is delivered to the printhead. In fact, there is a little feature in the maintenance uh, tab of your driver that allows you to do that, run an agitation process. So again, Pro 100, no, that does not require any agitation whatsoever. You can let that sit. The density of the ink will be the same today and two months down the road. It's not going to change. But the ink density of pigment-based inks will change as you let a printer sit unused for a given amount of time, often a bit too long. Okay, So make sure that you at least print often, once a week, and that will maintain that level of suspension, if you will, at a more optimum range. And so you will not experience density changes, which will occur. It will. Think about this. I'll leave you with this little thing to think about. You don't print for six months. And you come back and you print. The printer runs a nozzle check. It's bad. You got to run a cleaning cycle. Now it's printing okay. Well, that cleaning cycle really did not resuspend the inks that are inside the printhead's internal dampers. Ink has settled in there. Okay, it's not completely gelled, but it has settled. So it's going to have a higher concentration of pigment at the lower level. Okay, so that ink that's passing through the printer will be a higher concentration of, say, magenta, or yellow, or cyan, or black. So you will have a change in color rendition, which you will not be able to nail down to anything. So you, what do you do? You may create a profile that will correct it somewhat, but only until that level of higher density pigment ink passes through. Then it'll go back to its original condition 
and you will need to create another profile. You see what I'm saying? So printers like these, they're pretty much automatic doing this for you. Not much to worry about. Yeah, you could remove a cartridge from the front bay and agitate it every two months. You could do that just simply to have the ink that is preceding all of that delivery system already suspended at the correct level. Yeah, you could do that. But once it reaches that internal compartment, it's going to be kept resuspended for you pretty much automatically. P800, no such animal. Okay, you have to keep those cartridges suspended every every two months, every two to three months, okay? Especially using third-party inks that are not micro-encapsulated like the Epson original inks are. So just keep that in mind. It's just a little exercise that you have to run every two to three months in order to keep those inks suspended. Those third-party inks, they do need a little extra help, not so much the OEM inks. All right, that is it. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like as always. And remember to agitate your pigment inks, not your dye inks. They don't need it. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.